thank Rabbi Tarragon and Rabbi Jerome Peretz very much for inviting me to be part of this program. And I uh, have a particular Akar Satov to my extraordinary granddaughter, Talia Tarzik, for all of her help in making sure that all of the technological matters are taken care of perfectly. I have a surprise for you and uh, maybe even a shock. And that is that uh, Tisha B'Av is not really about mourning for the Churban Beis HaMikdash. Tisha B'Av really at its core is not about mourning for the Churban Beis HaMikdash. The real core mourning of Tisha B'Av and the kinos that I am now introducing, the core is a sense of distance that the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash caused between Knesset Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch it's not so much the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, it's really the separation between the Jews and the Rebbe Nashalom. The top of the first page, Psichta of Echa Raba, number 24, Davar Achari quotes a Pasuk, B'Shosh HaBikes HaKadosh Baruch Hu L'Hach V'Res Beis HaMikdash, when Hashem wanted to destroy the Beis HaMikdash, if I'm here, if I'm in it, they're not going to be able to touch it. My presence will make it impossible for them to be able to destroy it. So therefore, what does Hashem say? I'm going to have to leave. And he leaves. You follow the next couple of lines in the Medrash. Top left of the page. They burnt it, they destroyed it. And then Hashem says, what am I going to do? I don't have a place on earth anymore. I'm now separate. I'm distant. I'm removed. I'm far away. That's the Iker. If you look at the kinos, the first two-thirds or so of the kinos that deal with the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash really don't deal so much with the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. There's very little in the kinos that focus on the implications of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash per se. They focus on the distance. Look at the very beginning. We start in the morning, Shavasuru meni shema uni ochroi. Sakosa mishkan mishchos diburoi. Sakosa vahuvlugu giboroi. That Hashem, you separated yourself from us. You put up a screen between us and you. Our tfilos can't penetrate that screen. You're angry at us. You've enveloped yourself. You've distanced yourself. And if you go on and on and on, second page, I just gave you here the, just the first kina and, and a little piece. It's about the distance. It's about the separation. It's about the fact that we're far apart from one another. The end of the first kina, the middle of the second page, ki tam chakta This is an achamafaz. You, Hashem, put the image of Yaakov on your, on your throne because we don't want to be distant from you. We want to be connected to you. And the fact that we are augurs well for us, that we're not going to vulgar and remain in Gullus forever because we do have a connection. The next kina, the second kina, Echa Atzda Ba'abcha. How is it in your wrath you destroyed your faithful ones and you forgot the bris with Avram? Every one of these is you forgot, you forgot. <coughs> what did you forget? You forgot our closeness. The Iker Nakuda is not so much the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, it's the distance. Top of page three, famous Medrash. Medrash quotes a Pasek, Mizmar La'asaf Elokim Bo, Goyim Benachal Asecha. Mizmar La'asaf, it's a song for Asaf Elokim Bo, Goyim Benachal Asecha. The Gentiles destroyed, destroyed your inheritance. What do you mean, Frek the Medrash? Mizmar La'asaf? Bechila asaf, nihila asaf, kina las, terrible. It's amazing, Medrash. It turns Tisha B'av on its head. The Medrash says, I'll give you a mashal of a king who built a beautiful home for his son. And then the son was Yetzel Atar Basra. The son went off the derech. And the king destroyed the house. And the pedagogue, the teacher of the son, starts to play an instrument. And everybody says to him, why are you playing an instrument? The king just destroyed the house of your student. And he says, I'll tell you why. 
because Vatsim, he should have destroyed the student. Who was the one who was here to Latar Basra? The son, the son should have been punished, but he vented his anger, his father, on the house and not the child. And so for me, I'm happy. Mizmar La'asaf, that's the nimshal. Kach Amru La'asaf, HaKadosh Baruch God destroyed the Beis HaMikdash, and for you it's a Mizmar? Amru Lahem Mizamar Ani, She'eshofach HaKadosh Baruch Hu Chamaso, Al Ho'etzim V'al Ho'avonim, V'lo Shofach Chamaso Yisrael. God vented his anger on the Beis HaMikdash. It's a Mizmar, you hear such a thing? Wow, it's a Mizmar that the Beis HaMikdash is being destroyed. It's a Mizmar. You know why it's a mizmor? Because at least the Jewish people continue to exist. If you look at this medrash, it's quoted at the bottom of the page, both in Rashi and Taisus, on the Flamet Aleph, Flamet Beis, and Kedushin. I'll just read to you from either one. It doesn't matter. You have both of them here. Look at Rashi. It's about two-thirds of the way down. Kina lo asef mi boyele. Vedorash, kach omar asaf, shira, shira. Al shekila kodesh baruchu chamaso be'itzim u'avonim she'bebeso. Because he vented his anger on the house, the Jews were able to continue to exist. Because had he not done so, nothing would have been left. Sony Israel is obviously a euphemism. The Jewish people, would not have had a kill. It's a mizmar that the Beis HaMikdash is destroyed. Look at the top of the next page. I found a chida in the Birke Yosef. He quotes from the Sefer Kavanos of the Ari. Why is it that we say Nachem in the afternoon? The, the Gemara in Taina says that it was only first in the afternoon of Tisha B'Av when the Beis HaMikdash was actually set afire. So now it becomes easier. Now we're saying Nachem. There are all kinds of halachas about Kulis later in the afternoon of Tisha B'Av. On the contrary, we should have ratcheted up the intensity of the destruction, of the memory of the destruction. Now is first when it's happening. Zakti Ari, listen to this, the last paragraph in the Chida on the top of page four. Quotes from the Chida, and he says, V'nesin tam l'minad, K'mo she'kosafti le'el, the k'she Yisrael ro, the betish of bav ba'erev, he tziso esh be'echo, when they saw that the Beis HaMikdash was burning, Amru Mizmar, quotes our, Medrash, Mizmar Sheshofa Chamoso, Aleitzim Va'avanim. Listen to the next three words. It's unbelievable. Visamchu Simcha Gedol. The Ilavachi Lahoya Chas Vishalom Tukuma, Vaz Kiblunacha. Whoa! Samikdash is burning! Simcha Gedol, can you imagine? Samchu Simcha Gedol. Not stand by Poshet the Simcha, because they knew. Till then, they didn't know. Till then, they didn't know what was going to happen to them. After all, they were the ones who should have been punished. Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Chas Shalom, should vent his anger on them. They deserved it. And then, when they saw the Beis Hamikdash burning, they breathed a collective sigh of relief. Oh, Baruch Hashem, the Beis Hamikdash is burning. I can't even imagine saying these words. He is such a thing. Because the Iker of the kinos that we're going to recite, the Iker is not mourning for the, for the burning of the Beis HaMikdash. That's not the Iker. The Iker is the implication, and that is the separation and the distance. One final point. The last third of the kinos have nothing to do with the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. We end up Favar from we talk about the Asura Ruge Malchus. And then there are four kinos at least that talk about the Crusades. And then we have a kino of the Marami Rutenberg Shali Srufa Baesha, a burning of a of, of, of wagon loads full of Sifre Kaidish and manuscripts of Torah in France and Paris in 1242. That's the whole last part of the of the kinos. And then we circle back. A whole section, Eingevar from in Mitten, the Renan. A whole section not to do with the horrible. What's it doing there? It's not an appendix. And it's not an afterthought. You know why it's there? Because it belongs there. Because it is also, all of them, <clears throat> are also examples of the distance between HaKadosh Baruch and Knesset Yisrael. It is perfectly relevant. 
It's not Siegestick of it. Oh, now that I'm talking about one tragedy, I'll talk about another tragedy. That's exactly why it's here, because it exactly belongs. I conclude with the last uh, kina uh, that I have here uh, in this uh, uh, handout, and that is the famous kina about the Crusades, Mi'item Roshi Mayim. The bottom of page four is where it begins. On page five, they tell us exactly when it happened. The Balakina tells us. Shpira, Vermeiza, Magensa. Shpira was in the second line on the eighth day of Vir, and Vermeiza was destroyed twice on the 23rd day of Vir, and on Rosh Chodesh Sivan. And then we come to Adire, Kahal, Magensa, Hahadura. Mainz was destroyed by Chodesh Ashlishi, Bishlishi. They were destroyed in Chodesh Vir and in Chodesh Sivan. Tells us Beferish. And so then the keynote continues at the top of page six. So why are we mentioning it today? Right at the beginning. This is a terrible thing. The destruction of Gedele Yisrael is like a Chorban Beis HaMikdash. But why am I mentioning it today? What does that have to do with Tisha B'Av? I just told you four seconds ago exactly when it happened. It happened in Eor and it happened in Sivan. It's nothing to do with Tisha B'Av. We don't We don't set aside separate days to mourn separate events. We do it today. Why do we do it today? He doesn't explain. But why? Because that's exactly what Tisha B'av is all about. Tisha B'av is exactly not about the specific historical event of the destruction of not the first base of Mikdash, the second base of Mikdash. What it is at its core is acknowledging the horrific implications of the period, of the distance between HaKadosh Baruch and Knesset Yisrael. And that's the Asura Harugi Malchus, fits right in. And that's the Crusades, fits right in. The destruction of major, major communities of Torah. And that's the burning of 24 wagon loads full of Sifrei Kodesh. Could you imagine? Manuscripts burned 24 wagon loads. What's going to be? How are we going to have a Mesorah? We feel so distant. HaKadosh Baruch Hu removed himself. And therefore it all fits in. And so as you examine the Kinos, I invite you, look for where you could find specific mentions of how terrible it is that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. I think they're very rare. What you will find repeatedly is the distance. I conclude at the end here, the last source is from uh, Shlomo Volba and the Ali Shur. He talks about how hard it is to conjure up a sense of loss. It's far from us. You know, by me it's good. I'm having a great time. I don't feel like a nebuchad. What's missing? I have a great life. And we don't feel, writes Rav but what is it that we're not feeling? What's the iker that's chaser ba'olam? Not, No, that's not what he says. What's the iker? The iker that's chaser is that God went away. Hashchina histalka mi makoma, the shchina is in the oilem is so yoinem. And we don't have a connection. That's the ikr. That's why we have these other kinos that talk about all of these other events. We work on trying to make ourselves better and in particular to try to work on bridging the gap, to reconnecting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to bringing us and Hashem closer. And as we hope and pray, it will be expressed in the building and the rebuilding of the Beis HaMikdash when Hashra's Hashkina will once again be palpably present in the midst of Klav Yisrael and in, in the entire world. B'mhera Amenu. Amen. <laughs> Let's see you in